searching the web for the most talented, creative, and intriguing independent authors. Master, <laughs> your stories are ready. Ooh, goody. <laughs> The Emmett Blackwell Show, diving into the creative minds of sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and paranormal authors. Their fantasy is our reality. Hello once again, this is Emmett Blackwell, and I am back here with a very special guest, a very multi-talented guest, uh, Leah Scott Price, and she has created the Vampire Guardian Angels series, which is a comic, um, a very dark noir type comic for anybody out there who likes that dark kind of stuff, and we know you're out there, guys, okay? So, Leah, how you doing out there? Good. Thank you so much for having me on. No problem. Really appreciate it. No problem. So... The premise of this, I mean, when I first saw this, I mean, to be honest with you, I thought guardian angels and vampires. How do you how do you even combine that? What is the premise of this story? Um, basically, the premise is that you have a guardian angel that's been bitten by a vampire. Uh, that's the short story, <laughs> and they uh, they're actual a combination of vampire angel and serial killer. Oh, and wow. what makes them a serial killer is that they're so sick of prayers, they're so sick of people asking them for help, that the prayers actually act as a beacon to their victims. Oh, yeah. So when you pray to one, they come to you, not to save you, but to eat you. Oh, yeah. So well, that's kind of the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, when the, you have an cool overabundance, yeah, overabundance yeah. of prayers, that just makes sense, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's something so unexpected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh boy, I was just praying one day, and ah, uh, well, there it goes. Huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> when guardian angels attack. All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now, when did you begin this project? When did you start it initially? I started. I mean, the whole, the whole before the comic book. I mean, you can go way, way, way back on this. Um, it began as a novel, mm. actually. And no, no, began a screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> I was a filmmaker about 10 years ago, um, in 2000 or so, and well, more than 10 years. And it began as a short screenplay. And in it, and I, I started doing short films out of it. And I go, well, maybe this would, you know, work as a novel because I just changed the uh, screenplay into a more, you know, detailed novel. Mm -hmm. So I ended up self publishing that. And after that, I wrote like two more after that sequels. And I go, wait a minute, this this is getting somewhere. So I did two feature length films, just independent, you know, uh, let's make some B-movie films out of yeah, this. Yeah, there you go. And then after that, I'm like, what else can I do with this? There's got to be more. Oh, comic books. Yeah. And that started in 2012, the very first issue. And that's a great way to build up your... was in 2012. Yeah, and that's a great way to build up your brand. I mean, get yourself right. into every avenue you can and branch right. out and and you'll get you'll grow an audience without even thinking about it. Exactly. Yeah. So and, it's pretty much covered all bases. There's films, there's novels, there's comic books. I just need a anime now, but <laughs> that's later. <laughs> that's probably on the on the horizon. Uh, yeah, it's on the burner. <laughs> okay. So now now you had told me before that you had gone through an artist change and looking yes. at the art here. And if anybody's out there listening right now, if you're listening to the podcast on either Google play or, um, any one of our podcast things, they're, they're everywhere right now. Um, if, if you're watching it on YouTube, you're actually getting the full experience. So I definitely encourage you, if you're listening to it on the podcast, jump over and watch the YouTube video. Cause right now we're showing the art and the artwork is really, I mean, I want to say it's really edgy. And you can tell the difference that, that it went from like a more colorful, softer kind of art to a more darker, um, noir, kind of edgy, black and white with red blood. I mean, the amount of blood you got in this thing. <laughs> I, mean, I know they've given out awards to people who have blood excessiveness. And I mean, you fall right into the same category. That's amazing. And it really does add that spark. And so when you went through an artist change, what was the motivation there? 
Well, first of all, my, my two artists were wonderful. I mean, they were really great. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had them for almost for five issues. Wow. So that was almost five years. And uh, we worked together for quite a while. Um, they uh, basically had that film noir kind of um, exp- kind of like the uh, uh, art as well. So mm-hmm. it's like the black and white because that's what I wanted to begin with anyway. And after that, after a while, you know, life changes, life t- takes over. Oh, yeah. And eventually, you know, one was starting a family, another day, they graduated from college because when we worked together, they were still in college. Mm-hmm. So after a while, I'm like, you know what? Um, I need to do this myself. I can't always rely on artists to do this. And also, it's you know, getting more expensive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to just you know keep 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 it up. So I said, well, it's it's more cost effective if I did this myself. Yeah. Well, I so, like I like what you've done with it. I mean, it really yeah. does kind of give that. And I, I don't want to say this in a way that sounds bad, but it's it's minimalistic, but it's edgy. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And I like the fact that you use the black and white. You use the the dark shading. Um, it, it almost. I could see that printed through like newspaper print in such a way that that would just kind of pop with that red. And that's right. another question I have too, because you know, you deal with all this stuff and, and you have right. to have all the technical advancements in, in, you know, graphic design and all that. So when it comes to like the DPI that you have to use and the programs that you're using, so like what type of DPI would you even use for something like that? Um, we started out with, um, they would basically, uh, one would draw and uh-huh. the other would scan at 1,200 DPI. Oh, wow. And then send it to me, you know, through draw uh, the um, online file, you mm-hmm. know, exchange and all that stuff. I used files anywhere where mm-hmm. we had an account, they just uploaded to it. And then um, I would basically, once everything was done, they send it to me and I would just basically shrink it down to... Uh, to a TIFF, uh-huh. like a 600 TIFF, and to print would be, it depended on, I use CreateSpace, so they have mm-hmm. uh, certain um, requirements and limits yeah. on how big the file is to upload, so it came out to like each panel was 400 DPI TIFF. Yeah. So, you know, that's the way I would print it. It was a limit of 24 pages. Yeah. Um, which is exactly why I switched digital because you can now I'm at a hundred pages. Oh yeah, for, for the sequels, you know I could publish as many pages as I want. Yeah. And um, the the thing with with doing my own art was I, I it's a different style. I mean my my artist my previous artist was more into the Frank Miller kind of images mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but I was my I took art lessons I took drawing classes both from Marvel and DC artists. Mm-hmm. So they, I had that training from them. So that's why my style is a little more different. Yeah. It's, it's more like, you know, it's more, I guess it's kind of, that's why the edgier stuff comes out was because I, I emulated, you know, whoever my instructor was and he's worked for all the comic book series you know that art and uh, companies like idw you know uh-huh. boom comic boom studios so he's the one so i have a lot of the influence from him mm-hmm. <laughs> on that yeah and so that was kind of like really exciting kind of you know to, to do this on my own <laughs> yeah and and so like when it comes to your art i mean and that's the thing is you got all this stuff going on i mean you had a team of how many people I had two. Now we're down to one. <laughs> okay. Just me. Yeah, exactly. So you had a team of, of, well, you know, a couple of people that were working on this. You were scanning, you were right. drawing, you were doing all this stuff. When it comes to that, I mean, when did you finally hit the stage when you were saying, I'm confident enough to do this project myself? When it was taking over a year to do just one issue. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I understand, you know, they, they have work. They, so do I. I have full-time jobs and this and that. And they were wonderful. I mean, I can't thank them enough for giving me, you know, this gift of, of an awesome comic book series. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're great artists, and I hope other people hire them. Um, but the thing was, the, it was the weight. It was more of the weight, and I felt like it wasn't 
going in the direction that I wanted it to to go Mm -hmm. further. And also, you know, I knew I wanted to move into a more erotic, you know, kind of not safe for work images, (laughs) which I knew the other guy wasn't comfortable with. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, boy. So I was like, okay, I need to do this. So the hardest part was A, finding an instructor, B, learning the Photoshop to do it. I mean, my first time was like how am i going to put the text bubbles yeah how do, i mean i sat on youtube for a week watching everything and my I, the first time i did it i was like yay <laughs> <It> was like, <laughs> oh my god it was it was and then i found the instructor through craigslist i mean it was some miracle that that i found him that he was just freelancing and i'm like okay we're gonna do this yeah and that's another um, thing too about freelancers i mean you, you'd be surprised how many freelancers are out there that are willing yeah. to take on projects like this, and they do an amazing job. So, but no instructors. Oh yeah, very yeah. few, if none. Um, I found my inking instructor at uh, Meltdown Comics, which unfortunately is now closed. Mm. Um, I was taking lessons at a comic book store. I mean, how cool was that? Yeah. And I did that for two years, and he was awesome. I mean, he worked for DC and everything. Um, but it was, and then they carried my comic books as well. Uh, I think the hardest part was was getting the uh, training wheels off. Yeah. Because for issue six, I sat down with my instructor and goes, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. I want to draw it, but you ink it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't look too crappy. So we did it. I mean, I would sit there and he would erase everything I do and do, do it again. Like, shit. So, yeah. <laughs> so we would, it was just more of a, of a, you know, he goes, you have to do this. You, you have to do this on your own. So finally I did. And we published the whole thing. It's like, oh, my God, I actually did a comic book. So from there, you know, it went to issue seven, eight. I'm on issue nine now. Wow. And I'm drawing everything. Mm-hmm. by myself and i'm just like i can't believe i even got this far <laughs> yeah and that's <laughs> yeah. amazing i mean congratulations to to get over that hurdle and i mean it, <laughs> and it's just good stuff with with the other things that you have going on you also have a patreon account and this is something right. if i mean if our listeners are out there and they don't know what this is what the patreon account does is it allows artists to continue doing what they're doing and receive payment for it because even though you might see one comic book that's sitting there on the shelf, the amount of time and the amount of energy that goes into a comic, especially in Leah's case, when when you see that, you say, okay, wow, this is a you know a certain price. Okay, that's great. But the amount of work that they put into it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. And I mean, oh, yeah. so like with your Patreon account, you actually offer your subscribers a little bit more than what most people would. So, besides the stickers? <laughs> uh, besides the stickers, yeah. So um, so explain a little bit about what, what it comes with uh, a subscription with uh, Leah Scott Price's Patreon account. It's going to be a lot more risque. Uh, vampire comics, I mean, in my opinion, are supposed to be more erotic. Oh, you oh know, okay. a lot more skin, a lot more sex, <laughs> a lot more, you know, uh, BDSM. <laughs> so she just adds BDSM in a there. A lot more bondage. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was just like I just wanted to experiment more with that because the, the premise behind the vampires, the guardian angels, are they are so sick of, of not being able to do anything that now that they're vampires, they're capable of doing everything, everything yeah. that's wrong. Yeah, exactly. Especially you if you're know, a guardian angel. So, I mean, man. Right. So so it's free reign from there. And I knew that if it was digital and I did it on a private Patreon account that's subscription only, because this stuff you can't publish on Amazon. You can't publish. Oh, no. You know, yeah. you just can't do mainstream. There is no way I could publish a hard copy of it well, that would be carried without, you know, censorship. Oh, yeah. And, and so... That- and yeah, that's the thing, is... though. You, you almost allow your, your readers to see that side. And, I right. mean, you know, the BDSM, even though you just kind of threw it in there like a secondary <laughs> thought. <laughs> Even though, it's it's even though it's at the limits, I even mean, though, yeah. yeah, even though it's at like totally, we all know it's at the top of your mind. But anyhow, it's, it's more yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's it's pushing your your um, I mean, it's soft core. It's I mean, it's it's not porn or anything. Yeah. I mean, it just goes along with it's part of the story. Yeah, it, and it just makes a point that guardian angels are capable of making the most horrendously you know bad bad things <laughs> out there. 
So, but it's more like I'm pushing myself to draw more than just, you know, anything. I can draw even more than that. Yeah. And I mean, let's just kind of go back to the artistic level of this. <laughs> We're trying to keep this show PG-13, everybody. I know, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's okay. It's fun to be wild. It's vampires. Vampires. Yeah, vampires. It's a vampire's like, doing it. Like. Okay. <laughs> so anyhow when it comes to the artistic uh style of this and, and i know you mentioned bdsm i know you mentioned the sexual content when you look at it as an as an artist you have to understand that there's a lot of different poses i guess would be the right way to do this <laughs> a lot of different poses that someone would have to draw in order to make this right. look good and exactly. make it look believable you know i mean right. people don't just get twisted up in pretzels you know but um no. But I mean, maybe in your comic they do. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, it's not exactly that. It's more. It's more kind of like the the erotic. You know, how do you, How would I describe this? Uh, you're a prisoner of the vampire. Just get in there. There you <laughs> go. Just leave it to that. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's using their imagination on late yeah. night tonight. <laughs> okay. Just leave it like that. <laughs> not hardcore okay. part of the story. <laughs> well, I definitely encourage everybody out there who's been looking at the images so far, who's been seeing the kind of edgy art that she's been putting together, to go check out her Patreon account, check out and become a subscriber. Get that extra content that, you know, we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> really get the full feeling of this series. And um, so that kind of leads me to my to my last question here. Um, what advice would you give somebody who's trying to become a creative like you? Because I'd like to just call you an author. I'd like to just call you an artist. But you're a little bit of both. What would be the advice that you would give somebody? Uh, don't stop. Just keep at it. And if, you know, never give up, find a way. If, you know, you want to draw a comic book, find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. do some research. I mean, it took me a year to find my artists. It took me more than a year to even, you know, get to drawing my own thing and finding an instructor. Mm -hmm. And at any point I could have said, I'm not going to do this, but no, you don't give up. You keep researching, you keep talking to people, you keep finding a way. I mean, that's my motto. And, uh, just keep practicing. I, it, I practice I still practice every single I draw every single night. Mm -hmm. If you follow my Instagram at Leah Scott Price, I'm uploading from the beginning to the final result of drawing. So and I draw fast. Mm -hmm. Now I'm drawing pretty fast. So it's like I publish pretty much two to three pages a week. Yeah. So it's, it's more like you, you got to You have to keep going. You have to practice. You have to find and make use of resources, any resources that you can. Talk to other authors. Talk to you. Know, go to comic book shows. Go mm -hmm. to conventions. Talk to the artists. Say, how did you start? You know, strike up conversations with them, and most of all, support their work. Yeah. So you know, it's more like it's it's not. There's no secret formula to this. People are like, oh, you know, it's a, it's too hard. It's too tough. No, you make it hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you make yeah, it hard because you don't even start. Yeah, a lot of people can hold themselves back just in fear of what other people might think. And right. I, I appreciate what you're doing out there because you're kind of breaking a whole bunch of boundaries, which is great. And uh, it's it's amazing to see an artist slash author really put all their heart and spirit into something like this. And I want to thank you for being here on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. No problem. And just a reminder for everybody out there, check out uh, Leah Scott's Patreon page. I'm going to be posting it here in the description of the YouTube page and the um all the podcasts. So you can go ahead and click on it and become a sponsor, get that exclusive content and uh, really experience this story. So once again, Leah, thank you so much for being here on the show. Thank you so much. Take care. You too. Thank you once again, everybody. And uh, this is Emmett Blackwell signing off. Keep on reading and keep on writing. Searching the web for the most talented, creative and intriguing independent authors. Master. <laughs> Your stories are ready. Ooh, goody. <laughs>The Emmett Blackwell Show, diving into the creative minds of sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and paranormal authors. Their fantasy is our reality. 